Picture this, it's Halloween night, and a group of costumed kids huddle under the flickering glow of a streetlight, eagerly unwrapping their hard-earned treats. There's a witch munching on a Mars bar, a pint-sized pirate savoring a Snickers, and a little zombie popping M&Ms like there's no tomorrow. Across the circle, a miniature mummy (laughs) is dissecting a Three Musketeers bar, while a tiny vampire takes dainty bites out of a Twix, and a werewolf cub howls in delight over a Milky Way. As they revel in their sugary spoils, none of them realize that every single bite can be traced back to the land of 10,000 lakes, Minnesota. And for just a moment, the wind whispers something that sounds like Franklin Mars. And the streetlight flickers, Kitty, adding an extra layer of mystery to the night. (laughs) All the spooky, sweet magic of Halloween. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Jack. And I'm Kitty. And we're Jack Jack and and Kitty. Kitty. And this is Travel with Jack and Kitty, where we highlight the best of the Midwest. We explore life in the heartland of America with plenty of laughs and oof does along the way. So join us as we give you a little slice of Minnesota nice on today's episode of Travel with Jack and Kitty. Are you heading for a vacation to the heartland and is the Midwest on your travel bucket list? Are you a local just looking for fun things to do with the fam? Well, hold on to your lutefisk and get ready to eat some hot dishes. as we say you betcha to what makes the Midwest the best in our series of guidebooks. Look for Iowa's best, Minnesota's best, and Wisconsin's best. Each of these guidebooks feature 365 unique adventures. We take you deep into the heart of the Midwest, revealing hidden treasures and extraordinary wonders. Available now as paperbacks and ebooks on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Visit jackandkitty.com backslash guidebooks for more info. Imagine traveling the world and earning cash when you book flights, hotels, or excursions. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, our friends at Wayaway Plus can make that dream come true. It's a membership plan with unbeatable cashback rewards for travelers. Say a member books a hotel and round-trip flight for a weekend through Wayaway Plus. You pay for the hotel and for the flight, but after enjoying your trip, you get up to 10% cash back straight to your PayPal account. That means the membership plan can literally pay for itself even on the first trip. Cool, right? And to make the entire travel experience seamless, Wayaway Plus offers offers 24-7 support to answer all of your travel-related questions. Listeners of our show get 10% off their first Wayaway Plus membership purchase using promo code Jack and Kitty. Visit wayaway.io and click the Go To Plus button or crown icon on the top of the page. Or just search for Wayaway Plus. Again, the promo code you want to use is Jack and Kitty. Of course, there's a link in the show notes. Speaking of which, let's get on with the show. And we're back. Welcome, friends. Today, we're diving into a story that's perfect for the Halloween season. You know those candies you or your kids are about to go out and collect? Mars bars, Milky Ways, Snickers, M&Ms, Three Musketeers, and Twix? Well, they all got their start right here in Minnesota. Whoa. Thanks, Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to a man we like to call Minnesota's Willy Wonka. His name... Franklin Mars. Franklin Mars wasn't just a business guy. He was a candy visionary. He founded Mars Incorporated, a food company that's all about that sweet, sweet chocolate. (laughs) And guess what? His son, Forrest, jumped into the family biz and gave us M&M's and the Mars bar. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Forrest. <laughs> so grab your trick-or-treat bags and your sweet tooth and let's unwrap the life and legacy of Franklin Mars. Franklin Mars wasn't born into the candy empire. He built it from the ground up. Born on September 24th, 1883 in Hancock, Minnesota, his love for chocolate started young. His mom, Elva, taught him how to hand dip chocolate candies while he was home with a mild case of polio. By 19, he was out there selling molasses chips. Molasses chips. Now, love also played a role in his life. He married his first wife, Ethel G. Kissack, a schoolteacher, in 1902. Together, they had a son named Forrest in 1904. Remember that name. He becomes important later. In 1911, Franklin and his second wife, Ethel V. Mars, tried to make it big with a candy... Hey, wait a second, Kitty. I just noticed... Both of Franklin's wives Wives are named Ethel. (laughs) That is awkward. (laughs) Ethel and Ethel. Franklin and the Ethels. (laughs) Here's here's the next line. (laughs) I didn't know that you were reading that. I thought you just noticed that. I didn't read through. That was my good acting, Kitty. (laughs) Well, that's kind (laughs) of... 
<laughs> Did I just act so well? You, you believe me? You pulled it off. I believed you. <laughs> I'm reading your script. You wrote it. Well, that's actually kind of crazy. I wonder what the chances are finding... <laughs> Kind of crazy that I could act, or are you back on your script? Both. I'm back on the script, okay. and I'm still marveling over the fact that you actually pulled the line off. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what the chances are in finding love twice with the same name. Love, Shmlove, Kitty. I bet old Franklin just didn't want to change out his monogram towels <laughs> or personalized bathrobes, so he just went out looking for any old gal named Ethel. <laughs> well, I doubt that. But either way, in 1920, Franklin and Ethel founded Mar O Bar Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The company would later become Mars Incorporated. In 1923, the Milky Way Bar hit the shelves thanks to an idea from his son Forrest. It became a sensation. But the candy magic didn't stop there in 1930. He developed my favorite, the Snickers bar. Those are pretty awesome. Well, old Franklin Mars wasn't just about the candy. He was also about living life large. In the late 1920s, he went down to Pulaski, Tennessee and bought up a bunch of local farms. Hey, we've been to Pulaski many times. That part of Tennessee is gorgeous. It sure is. Well, that's where he built an epic estate he called... Milky Way Farm. Milky Way Farm. That sounds pretty wild. Yeah, it was lavish as lavish can be. Get this, Kitty. He employed 935 local guys from N the area. 935? <laughs> they constructed a massive 25,000 square foot clubhouse, 30 barns, and a full-size horse racing track. Talk about your dream estate, right, Kitty? Well, I will say, well, speaking of horses... One of his horses even won the Kentucky Derby. Franklin spent the rest of his life on that sprawling 2,800-acre farm. Whoa. When he passed away, he was initially buried there, but later both he and his wife Ethel were moved to a private mausoleum at Lakewood Cemetery in Minneapolis, where they rest today. So if you're ever in Minneapolis, maybe swing by Lakewood Cemetery. Pay your respects to the man who put some of your favorite candies in your Halloween bag. And since it's Halloween season and cemeteries are a great spot to visit this time of year, swing by my old babysitter spot. Of course, Kitty, I'm talking about Tiny Tim. <laughs> Tiny Tim. <laughs> That's right. His final resting place is Lakewood Cemetery in Minneapolis. It is. Guys, my hubby Jack isn't joking about his babysitter being Tiny Tim. In fact, sometime this winter, we'll be doing an entire series on Tiny Tim, the ukulele playing oddball who loved tiptoeing through the tulips. Well, all I know is this, Kitty. If you're looking for a romantic Halloween date this month, take your sweetie to the Lakewood Cemetery. <laughs> Drop off a tulip with Tiny Tim and eat a Snickers bar with Franklin Mars. <laughs> Boy, you really know how to impress a gal. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> Guys, let's shift gears and talk about the next generation of Minnesota's candy legacy, Forrest Mars Sr. This guy was a powerhouse, just like his dad. Forrest was born in Wadena, Minnesota, but grew up in Saskatchewan, Canada, raised by his maternal grandparents after his folks split. Forrest got his brain power from the University of California, Berkeley, and later from Yale, where he got a degree in industrial engineering in 1928. After school, he reconnected with his dad and joined the family biz at Mars Incorporated. But father and son didn't always see eye to eye. Forrest wanted to take Mars global, but his dad wasn't so keen on that idea. Despite this, Forrest played a big role in the development of both Snickers and Three Musketeers bars while working at the Chicago plant. Eventually, Forrest set out on his own. He launched food products manufacturing, which brought us Uncle Ben's Rice. And, Uncle Ben's Rice. That's right. And Pedigree Pet Food. Oh, Kitty, there you go. Well, then came the big <laughs> Why hit. Why is Pedigree related to me? Because <laughs> your name is Kitty. <laughs> By the way, guys, now comes the time of the show where we mention Kitty is not a talking cat. <laughs> One time we had a listener think that, and we just always kind of just as a little PSA, throw that out there about once a week, once every two we weeks. We try to be helpful. She's a human, not a cat. <laughs> Katie, then came the big hit, M&M's, created in 1940 in partnership with Bruce Murray. These candy-coated chocolates became iconic. And fun fact, Forrest was actually allergic to peanuts, but still launched peanut M&Ms in 1954. After his dad passed away, Forrest merged his company with Mars Inc. in 1964, essentially bringing the family business under one roof again. He had a family of his own, too. He was married to Audrey Ruth Mayer with three kids, Forrest Jr., John, and Jacqueline. 
Forrest stepped back in 1973, leaving the empire to his children. And that brings our story to, well, today. Mars Incorporated is a massive player, not just in the candy game, but in the entire food industry. We're talking a multinational giant, you guys. In 2022, they raked in an eye-popping $45 billion in annual sales. $45 billion. <laughs> And it's not just about candy. They're into pet food and animal care services, too. So whether it's treating yourself to a Milky Way or feeding your furry friend, chances are you've got a Mars product in your life. But here's the interesting part. Even with all this growth, it's still a family affair. Forbes magazine ranks them as the fourth largest privately held company in the U.S., And guess who owns it? Yep, the Mars family. Today, they're headquartered in McLean, Virginia, keeping it all in the family from generation to generation. So the next time you're indulging in a Snickers or filling Fido's bowl with pedigree, remember you're playing a part in a family-run empire that started with a candy-loving guy right here from Minnesota and his chocolate-dipping mom. How sweet is that? There you go, Kitty. How sweet is that? Very sweet. All As right. a special thank you for listening today, visit jackandkitty.com to download our free guidebook called Best in the Midwest, Your Guide to Epic Fun. Again, that's jackandkitty.com. It's our way of thanking you for listening today. Speaking of thank yous, we want to give a very special shout out to all the candy loving guys and their chocolate dipping moms <laughs> over over on patreon yes thank you for your support and finally if you have a sweet tooth and would like to talk with other candy obsessed folks about today's show visit our facebook page to chat and share your thoughts and maybe even dip some of your own chocolate with your fellow listeners yes all of these links can be found in the show notes along with a blog article with more info about today's episode find that at jackandkitty.com thanks for listening and on behalf of my better half have a super day thanks guys <laughs>